Hello and welcome to the daily cricket show, uh, Cricket Happenings, uh, dear friends and subscribers. As far as today's Cricket Happening show is concerned, uh, well, it's the uh, first one day international between Sri Lanka and Pakistan, uh, which was played in Dubai today, and it ended up with Pakistan definitely showing their superiority. Uh, as far as ODI cricket is concerned, being the Champions Trophy winners, as uh, they actually, um, you know, beat Sri Lanka by 83 runs uh, in a in a clash in Dubai. So definitely, the Babar Azam are definitely showing that what a consistent player he is in ODI in One Day Internationals, as he picked up his sixth ODI century, and. Uh, and uh, the bowling was concerned was Hassan Ali uh, and uh, the other bowler Ruman Raiz who impressed with the bowling taking three wickets apiece. I'll be talking about that and then we have some lot of cricket news no doubt about it. Some snippets of cricket news because ICC meeting uh, has concluded in Auckland uh, and uh, the, there are a lot of news which I would like to generally share with you dear friends and subscribers. But definitely I'm going to start off with this summary between Sri Lanka and Pakistan. The first ODI, the toss was won by <coughs> Upal Taranga, the Sri Lankan captain, and one thought that the pitch was definitely tailor-made for batting, and one was a bit surprised at the uh, decision taken by Upal Taranga of inserting the opposition Pakistan to bat first, probably uh, Upal Taranga thought that they are good chasers. Uh, well, but it all started off with the uh, Pakistani inning starting with Fakhar Zaman, the hero of the Champions Trophy, walking in with Ahmed Shahzad. And uh, the runs were not easy to come by, with Suranga Lakmal sticking to a good line, uh, Gamage also doing a fine job, and uh, both were really uh, keeping a good line, and the, the, it was not easy <coughs> for both the batsmen uh, to get the ball off the square, it was uh, so it was good bowling, especially uh, Suranga Lakmal. I thought impressed uh, bowling a good line, uh, coming it to a certain extent, I would say. Uh, but then finally, the wicket came. Now, Ahmed Shahzad was kept scoreless for 12 balls, he was really struggling to get the ball off the square, and then uh, really a rush of blood because uh, he definitely wanted to dominate the baller, he wanted to get some runs. He came down the wicket to Gamage uh, to have a go at him and Akila Dhananjaya um, actually held the catch and Ahmed Shahzad, after being scoreless for 12 balls, was dismissed for a duck. So that made it 11 for 1 and that brought the entry of Babar Azam into the mix as Babar Azam joined Fakhar Zaman. Fakhar Zaman, well, what one saw from Fakhar Zaman was that he was uh, today he was he, he was playing in a very mature fashion uh, he was not really trying to belt the ball or get a lot of runs he, he understood the situation and uh, he was chiseling together a partnership along with Babar Azam and Fakhar Zaman did play some good strokes as uh, this was going on uh, the runs were uh, I mean not easy to come by but definitely they were coming uh, but then they saw the introduction of the spinner Akila Dhananjaya. Uh, once that happened, Akila Dhananjaya struck by actually clean bowling Fakhar Zaman for 43 of 45. That was four fours and one six. Uh, Babar Azam was joined in by Mohamed Hafiz. Mohamed Hafiz did not waste any time. As soon as he came, he started uh, started uh, scoring uh, very, very freely. Uh, his contribution was 32 of 38, five fours. But Babar Azam uh, was uh, looking um, really, really princely at the crease. Uh, he was not really trying to attack the ball. He was playing with very, very softly. But whenever he was stroking the ball, it was good to see as to how quickly uh, he was uh, getting on with the line of the ball. And also, uh, his eye and reflexes were very good as he was really keeping a good eye on the ball and he was really stroking them very well. And uh, as that was going on, Babar Azam and Mohamed Afiz uh, had taken the score on to 124 and Mohamed Afiz fell a victim to the leggy Van der Se, the 32 of 38 Dalvaris 5 fours. Shoaib Malik joined uh, Babar Azam and um, from 124 for 3 in the 28th over, 
Uh, definitely there was an injection of runs into the Pakistan innings. I mean, definitely 124 for three in 28 overs. Uh, one could not uh, rate it a good score at all. Uh, but what followed was some real fireworks, not from Babar Azam. Babar Azam um, continued to play in the sedate fashion. But uh, what was good about Babar Azam is he was not only holding the innings, he was really nurturing this Pakistan innings. And, Sir, and Shoaib Malik uh, definitely showing some real rare aggression, I would say, <coughs> as he collected 81 in a very good partnership from 124 for 3. Um, uh, thanks to Shoaib Malik uh, showing some real aggression there, the score reached 263. So basically, uh, it was a good partnership of 149 odd runs between Shoaib Malik and Babar Azam. And then finally, uh, it was the wicket was of Shoaib Malik. Shoaib Malik contributed <coughs> a very a brisk 81 of just 61 Delvis, five fours and two sixes included on that. Uh, and then Sarfraz Ahmed once again failed with the bat. He was gone for one. Uh, and then Babar Azam was there almost till the end. And as I said, what a consistent player he has been in ODIs. He picked up his sixth ODI century. And that is something in his short career to have six ODI centuries. I think it's uh, quite an achievement for Babar Azam. It des uh, definitely deserves kudos for that. And his score was 103. He was a victim of the bowling of Lakmal. 103 of 131 balls, five fours. Uh, and finally, uh, when uh, and then uh, Imad Wazim and Hassan Ali were there at the crease. Imad Wazim was not out on 10 of five balls with one six. Hassan Ali had two boundaries in a knockoff and unbeaten 11 of five balls as uh, Pakistan uh, reached 292 for six of their 50 overs. And I thought they, they definitely accelerated at the end stages, uh, th especially thanks to Shoaib Malik, which saw a great injection of runs into this Pakistan total. Uh, as far as the bowling was concerned, Galakmal bowled uh, well, I thought 10 overs, 2 for 47. Uh, Gamage bowled 8 overs, no maiden, 1 for 49. Uh, Akila Dhananjaya, 8 overs, 1 for 51. Pereira uh, was a bit uh, costly, 8 overs, 1 for 68 for him. Van der Say also, I thought, bowled a good line, 10 overs, 147. And Melinda Shrivardhan, I did a fine job as well, 6 overs, none for 28. <laughs> now, Sri Lanka were given a target of 293 runs to win from their 50 overs. They started off with Nirushan, Dikwala, and Upul Tanga at the crease. And Upul Tanga definitely played a few good strokes, uh, I, I suppose. Uh, Nirushan, Dikwala, as usual, as he does, he did that. And the bowling operations was... Uh, was started by uh, Junaid Khan and Ruman Rais from either end. And uh, Junaid Khan was uh, definitely on the money, uh, but Ruman Rais was a bit uh, spraying the ball, uh, in, in, in not, 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 not really able to control, and he was spraying the ball a bit. Uh, but then it was um, the first wicket to go was, uh, it was I think it was uh, Niroshan Dikwala, and he was a victim of the balling of Ruman Rais. Uh, Ruman Rais uh, nipped the wicket of Nirushan Dikwala, caught behind the surprise of the bowling of uh, bowling for 19 with three boundaries. After that, we saw Mohammad Afiz deliver a wonderful delivery to Upal Taranga, which turned in and clean bowled Taranga for 18 of 38 delivers, three fours. Uh, Chandimal failed to the bat. Uh, he got a nice inducker from Ruman Rais, who really impressed with his bowling today. And uh, Chandi Mal was on his way back. LBW bowled Rais for four. And uh, that really, Sri Lanka ch starting the chase 292, uh, definitely they were undergoing a struggle at 55 for three when Taranga departed. And then there were more problems uh, for Sri Lanka as two quick wickets were taken after Ruman Rais had done a good job and Mohamed Afiz at the other end. Hassan Ali, the hero of the Champions Trophy, came to bowl. And he picked up two important wickets. And I thought that really, really set this Sri Lankan innings absolutely on the back foot. As uh, Kushal Mendes, a big wicket, because Mendes, Kushal Mendes is normally, um, uh, has been very consistent in one day. Years, and his wicket was claimed by Hassan Ali. As Hassan Ali got him caught by Safra Ahmed for two. And Srivardhana stumps uh, were rattled by Hassan Ali for naught. And that uh, meant that the Sri Lankan half the side were into the pavilion for just 67 runs uh, in the 16th over. And definitely it was not a pretty picture at all. But Lairo Thiramani was holding the fort there. He was trying to, uh, you know, slowly get along with things and slowly nurture the innings. 
and he got the company of Tisra Pereira. Tisra Pereira tried a few big shots uh, and his contribution was 21 of 29 balls and Shadab Khan got a solitary wicket and that was of Tisra Pereira for 21. But Tirimani was still there at the crease uh, at that particular time. And then Tirimani himself, once Tisra Pereira was gone, uh, Akila Dhananjaya uh, came there to join Tirimani. And Tirimani, uh, in fact, after uh, being uh, getting the highest score of 53, uh, with uh, of 74 balls, three fours departed. He was uh, LBW ball Ruman race for 53, uh, coming back for the second spell. After that, uh, Akila Dhananjaya and Jeffrey van der Sey were at the crease. And uh, at that time, when seven wickets were down for 132 in the 33rd over, um, uh, when, when one was probably thinking as to what Sri Lanka was going to do, probably the innings was going to wound, be uh, wound up very quickly. But as far as Akila Dhananjaya and Van der was concerned, it looked like they definitely wanted to get some match practice there because they were not really able to force the pace. Uh, there, was, uh, there was never a hint of uh, they really going for the target. And uh, that was a bit surprising. And uh, one does not know what was the reason behind that. Uh, because from 32nd over, when Tirumani departed uh, at, um, uh, at, with a score on 132 for 7, uh, they managed to um, put a 68 runs partnership, but it occupied 15 overs uh, with Dhananjaya. Uh, I'm sure this was his maiden 15 ODIs. Uh, he finished on an unbeaten 50 of 72 runs with 5 fours. Jeffrey Van der Sey's contribution was 25 47, and that would have definitely frustrated the Pakistanis because they would have probably thought that they could have wrapped up the match and gone, uh, gone back and had some rest. But that didn't happen as Jeffrey Van der Sey and Dhananjaya frustrated them uh, with this 68 run partnership. Van der Sey was a victim of the Hassan Ali for 25 of 47, that was 1 4. Lakhman was not around 7. And, uh, and uh, finally, it was all over. I mean, Sri Lanka was just there and uh, they were restricted to 209 for 8 of 50 overs. Thus, um, uh, the, uh, the Pakistanis actually are taking a lead, 1 0 lead in the 5 match series. Um, over here and they won the match by 83 runs. Uh, Junaid Khan, six was none for 28, could not get a wicket but Ruman Reis, uh, even though he was a bit costly I thought, but uh, definitely he was amongst the wickets, 9 hours made in 3 for 49 and uh, he shared the wickets with Hassan Ali uh, who was as impressive as ever, 9 hours made in 3 for 36. Mohamed Afiz did a fine job in the middle, 10 hours made in 1 for 32. Shoaib Malik bowled 5 hours for 19. Shadab Khan got a solitary wicket of this Pereira, 7 was 1 for 26 and Imantua Azim uh, 4 overs uh, which, uh, which was uh, very economical, it just gave 15 runs and Shoaib Malik uh, definitely was named man of the match, one would probably uh, dispute that as to why Babar Azam did not get the man of the match but the man as I said, uh, Babar Azam definitely played a good hand, there is absolutely no doubt about it, uh, full credit to him uh, but probably uh, the reason the man of the match went to Shoaib Malik uh, was uh, because of his bowling as well in 5 overs, 19 runs and uh, because of his all-round performance and uh, with the, uh, by, by scoring a brisk 81 of 61 deliveries I think that really gave a real impetus to the Pakistan innings and that's a precise reason Shoaib Malik picked up the player of the match award so well done Shoaib Malik and also to Babar Azam who definitely is showing what a wonderful ODI cricketer he is he's, very, he's been very successful in ODI cricketer and as I said, in, a, in his brief career, he has already had six ODI centuries, and that's quite a quite an achievement, according to me. Right now, uh, let's uh, get on from here. So that is the so one zero lead in the five match series. So the next um, thing that I'm going to look at is cricket news. As far as cricket news is concerned, as you know, the ICC uh, meeting was going on in Auckland, in New Zealand, and uh, there, there are a few things which have come up. One is, as you know, uh, they were talking about the Test League, uh, ODI leagues, and finally that will be coming to fruition, uh, and it will be it will be beginning only in 2019. So once the 2019 World Cup is over, uh, we are going. Uh, the, the ICC has uh, not proposed. This is something which has been approved now by the uh, International Cricket Committee. Uh, the first two-year Test Championship, uh, the top nine teams uh, will uh, will compete against each other. And uh, that will be the Test League and the ODI League. And the other news that I can uh, share with you uh, is that they also decided that Zimbabwe would be hosting uh, the World Cup qualifiers in the year 2018. 
uh, and um, I'm also trying to see uh, what are the news we have here uh, so that is one news and uh, uh, and also uh, ICC has also come up with um, the inaugural four-day test match uh, the inaugural four-day test match is going to be uh, played between South Africa and Zimbabwe so basically they are just experimenting on a basis uh, to see how this goes so this is going to start uh, with immediate effect so uh, South Africa will be playing Zimbabwe in a four-day test match uh, which is going to be happen for the first time in international cricket um, and um, other than that uh, the Bangladeshi uh, player Shaki Bil Hassan who is now uh, taking a six, uh, taken a six month, six month break from uh, Bangladesh cricket uh, has been inducted uh, into the MCC's World Cricket Committee. Well dear fans, subscribers, uh, not much to uh, really dwell on uh, but it was a real pleasure bringing you this uh, daily cricket show and yes let me also say that you might be wondering as to why I didn't speak about the final T20 uh, between India and Australia. The reason being not a single ball was bowled. Uh, Hyderabad, it was always raining as I was, I was telling you yesterday. And finally, it ended up with the match uh, being uh, 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 no, no, no balls bowled in the match. In fact, not even the toss was put and it was all over. Uh, with the deciding T20, where, where, which one, were, one, one was really, really waiting for it, but it never happened and it resulted uh, with India and Australia actually sharing the ODI series 1-1. Um, sorry, uh, not ODI series, sharing the T20 series 1-1. Uh, um, so, well, dear fan subscribers, uh, that, uh, that, that, that really, really sums up uh, this cr daily cricket show of mine today. Hope you all uh, loved it. And uh, with more cricket happenings to come tomorrow on my next cricket broadcast, um, this is your host Ram um, signing off this evening. Thank you.